Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today for something a bit special. I received something in the post a few days ago. You guys are kind enough to send me presents and stuff, which is great. This one was a book called Command Decision. It was by Tom Law. Now Tom Law, you might recognize that name. He comments in just about all of our YouTube videos and he's a big follower, um, all round cool guy. Uh, if we talk about, look at Tom. He spent 24 years in the United States Navy as technician and operator for surface to air and cruise missile systems serving mainly on guided missile destroyers and frigates. He survived several tours patrolling the Persian Gulf, including a stint during the Iran-Iraq war. And this is exactly what we're looking at today. And it just so happens that in the book, the first fight, the, the book is divided into two. And by the way, I recommend to go and buy this book. It's, it's really cool. Uh, the, the first fight is, I just found it really interesting in the first fight. It's exactly what the guys in the Grim Reapers like. It's all the kind of 80s planes and stuff that we like with a really interesting scenario that we can try and reenact. And that's what we're going to do today. And the information is top class from him because he just knows it all back to front. He talks about inside the, the frigates, which we've got in DCS, in the missiles, how the missiles work that we've got in DCS and um, the command stations and stuff like that. So we're going to look at fight one from the book. This is fiction. This is not a real life engagement, but it is based on engagements that did happen in 1987 between Iran and the USA. Uh, there were small conflicts, tit-for-tat strikes going on, and this is a basically an expansion of that with one of those tit-for-tat strikes went wrong and went hot. What we're going to start with, the USS John A. Moore is going to be the target for us today, and that's what essentially, if you like, the book in some ways is centered around. This is the guy that in the first half of the book is going to get attacked. So what's happening at this time in history, in real life, 1987, is the Iranians have been at war with the Iraqis for seven years, and neither has really gained the upper hand. It's now become a World War I style war of attrition. The Iraqis being in relatively good favour with the world generally at the time could buy missile systems, aircraft, ground systems from the Soviet Union at the time and say they were stocked up with SA-6s and T-72s and all this kind of cool stuff. The Iran, the problem is in, oh god, 1979 had had the overthrow and installation of the Ayatollah, as you're all aware, um, and that burnt their reputation around the world. Iran could no longer buy weapons from anyone in the world apart from the French. And let's face it, you know. Um, so they were massively, massively problematic. What they had done before the takeover is they bought a bunch of F-14As from America and f 4 Ease? I've forgotten what mark of F4, but the Phantoms. Bunches of them. However, they couldn't buy any spares. And this is still a problem with them today because they absolutely must have their Ayatollah and whatever. And so they were keeping their fleet of F14s and Phantoms together with a shoestring. And that's going to come into play for how we re-enact re re this today. In 1987, in this fictional book, they went for a mass strike. The idea was to kill as many frigates which were in the uh, Arabian Gulf at that time as they could to push the United States out of the war via the idea of public opinion, see Vietnam, see uh, the Korean War. I should say the USS is here, sorry, the United States is here, by the way, because Iran, rather than starting to attack uh, Iraq, decided to start attack, attacking shipping, and this is real, that going to and from Iraq. So they wanted to try and starve Iraq into submission by killing the tankers that came out here and went to Europe, went to Russia, went to South America and so on. Now the problem with that as far as the United States was concerned is that a lot of those tankers were heading to the United States. So they bundled in here, just put, let's face it, not enough ships in here and that's where the idea of the book comes from that Iran are going to say let's do a mass attack on everything everything we've got basically see if we can knock them out of the war by public opinion okay so their plan was first if we look over here and this is ex everything exactly where it is in the rule book because they give coordinates times everything speeds uh, we can see that the USS Stodard which is a destroyer a 50s 60s destroyer is at 12 knots the reason it's so slow is it is guarding the Sea Isle City which is a super tanker okay and they are going through the Strait of Hormuz, which is a very small strait, as you know, it's like a hundred and hundred miles across or something, which for a strait is you know it's pretty small here. Now, what happened was that Iran in real life had a battery of HY2 Chinese silkworms, anti-ship shore battery systems. And if we jump to this real declassified data that we've got hold of here, that one of you guys sent this, this is 1987, the real positions of the actual uh, silkworms in 1987 for Iran and if you want to come and read this you can go and do that pictures and everything so we've based 
our placement, we've sexed it and Hollywooded up a bit, we've based our placement on, we believe the real placements were. So on Keshem, we've got a bunch of HY2s with a mountain-based radar system about 10 miles away via data link. Uh, and they're going to, as the book, attack the USS Stodart. In the book, the missiles all missed the USS Stodart because in the book, the Stodart was using countermeasures chaff and because the tanker it was guarding was a super tanker it the missiles decided to go for the super tanker and blow the super tanker up instead we don't have any super tankers in this game so i've just put two tankers close to each other and we're just going to let it run and see what happens whatever happens happens okay next uh, we uh, the iranians which is us today are going to attack the uss john a moore this is a oliver hazard perry 1980s class frigate we have this modeled and modeled well in the game which is what gave me gave me the idea for doing this it's cruising along at 50 knots it's cruising slow to a safe gas and it's uh, going to be escorting something the attack is going to consist of six times iranian phantoms now at this point in the war 1987 seeing six phantoms together from iran was impossible they couldn't get enough kerosene they couldn't get enough spare parts these phantoms flew, but they were bare bones. They didn't have any radio equipment because the radios had broken. They didn't have any radars. The radars had broken. They didn't have all the normal stuff. They literally had some missiles that sort of worked and some engines that sort of worked, and that's all they had. We don't have phantoms today. We have vegans, and for all intents and purposes, the phantom and the vegan for ground attack is actually going to be quite similar in the type of weapons we're going to be using. Not perfect, but pretty similar. Each plane, phantom had... In the book, four times AGM-65A, the early model uh, optical Maverick system, which is what we're going to be using as well. Now, again, seeing four Mavericks on a plane in 1987 in reality was almost impossible. They didn't have enough Mavericks. They couldn't buy them. They didn't have enough planes to drive them. They didn't have, well, they had plenty of pilots, but they didn't have uh, the hardware. But in the book, they managed to buy, uh, actually, uh, as they say in the book, dealt with the devil, and they bought them from uh, Israel. Um, in exchange for secret information. Okay, so we're going to do that. Six planes, four in missiles in total, 24 missiles. We've only got five guys at the moment, but hopefully another guy will turn up. Okay, that's that. They flew are on the deck, uh, literally 50 feet off the ground. They located the, um, the guy by eye and with radio reports because they had a radio uh, installed at the last minute from Israel uh, from islanders who saw the USSA more. Now we have radar because we can't, simulate that we are going to allow the radars in the vegans to um uh, to find it up because we need to find it it's pointless if we don't find it and then we're going to attack with our period correct weapons as well as that five times iranian armed patrol boats of about 500 ton class i think uh, travel at flank speed from that base there kark island and do a simultaneous attack with the vegans slash phantoms and attack with uh, they're not guided missiles but they do have their old old boats they do have high caliber weaponry 100 mil guns we've got that simulated with some russian patrol boats that we're going to use i've forgotten the name of it so we're going to do a simultaneous strike time on target with the vegans attack that now in the book the attack uh, went um, semi well, kind of. I guess you, you kind of expect it. The uh, let's see, we had the, an Iranian, two Iranian boats destroyed by friendly fire. The, rea the reality of this is, it's going to be confusing out there, and we may fire on friendlies. It's we're going to try not to, but that may happen. Um, and then the Iranians got through in their boats and managed to get two high caliber rounds on the USS A. John Moore, uh, which penetrated, I think, the mess deck and killed several people there. Uh, then the John Moore got its harpoons working and shot the rest of the Iranian boats one way or another. So we, we've got that all set up. We're going to see how that actually plays out in DCS. As well as that, the Phantoms went in on the deck in formation. Now these are not, you know, these are not US pilots. These are not US tacticians or, you know, they're not super powered tacticians. So they went in as a Green Reaper style blob um, because they didn't have the training to do pincer attacks and stuff like that as far as i'm aware I, you know i'm just following the book at the end of the day um they went in under the deck uh, they used surprise uh, and the fact that the uss john moore was tight on roe so they can't fire unless basically we're within 10 miles that was the roe in the book that's the roe we're going to use and popped up at the last second dumped their mavericks and attacked in the end five iranian phantoms got shot down by the sm standard missile launcher uh, which is a single rechargeable uh, arm based hydraulic arm launcher on the f uh, bow of the moor that's perfectly modeled in dcs so we're going to see how that goes one got away um and then they came back later for a second attack but we're not modeling that 
Uh, maybe we'll model that another day. Of those 24 Mavericks, three got through and did serious damage. One below the waterline, two around amidships, because to lock on for these optical missiles, it was easiest to lock onto a midships. It's going to be hard to lock onto a bow or stern, and that's what we're going to be doing today: a locking onto a midships. In terms of damage, the you know a, a, a damage control is complicated in a, uh, a ship. It's more about fire than actual holes in the thing. Damage at the end of it, it was not sunk, but it was rendered useless. Um, it had no weapon systems left at the end apart from handheld 50 cal so it was rendered useless but still just about floating and it had a maximum speed of 5 knots so that's what we're going to do our best to achieve today the whole idea is they can do it in the book with an experienced writer can we do it but who you know who's worked with the systems can we do it in, in, uh, in DCS I think it's going to be really interesting as well as that one of the Iranian Phantom pilots Allahu Akbar into it to take out two of the radars so Allahu Akbar at least for one person maybe me is going to be allowed to simulate the book. Okay, guys. Next, um, we've got the USS Wobsworth scrambled from Bahrain at flank speed of about 30 knots, and whether it's 40 to engage, but they didn't get there in time for fight one, so they're going to be negated. Two times Iranian class Alvent, uh, two times Iranian Alvent class frigates were attacking, and they were supposed to be time on target with the Phantoms and the patrol boats, but the two captains. The two commanders of those Alvents uh, mutinied in the end and refused to sail faster than cruise speed, and so they didn't get there in time for fight one. A kilo class comes at 15 knots from Kish, but uh, it's not there in time for fight one. The Torville should have been there. It was a French, uh, if you like, token resistance to show that the you know other parts of the UN were willing to help in the crisis was there. Uh, and he was ordered to help, but instead they literally, in the book, turned the wrong way and went to Dubai to run away. So that's interesting. And that's it. That's the battle.
Okay, so B E R, and don't forget to fucking put it back when you're done. Put the altimeter on the sea level because it will affect where the little circle is on your HUD. Roger. So F Slav F S I, guys. I think that is. And select your RB75 on your selector now, guys, because you might lose it otherwise, you might forget. Uh, didn't have any jabs. 1013 is what you're looking for. Is that Q and H? Is that QFE? Uh, yep. Everyone, 1013. So we're looking at an elevation of about 760. I'll fire my RB75 into blood, ripcord a crash into a mountain, uh, Ruby, forget how to take off. Uh, Tabra will go the wrong way. Else, what you need to do is put your cartridge in, then go onto the knee board and go to the page that has the uh, ground crew set cartridges from marks on F10 map. Got it. And then and it should take in seven marks. And get rid of the knee board. Yeah, get rid of the knee board. Uh, put the cartridge in. Load cartridge as per usual. Was there a check me on the uh, stream? Cap 2 complete. So, everybody, make sure you are at pause and out. And first, we're going to click on B1. You should have it at a bearing of uh, just under 090 and a range of 80 kilometers. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Okay, next B2, you should have it at a bearing of uh, one, just uh, 185 and 115. Uh, two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, so if you're on TID and in, you need to type 154000 and confirm with LS. No, correction, uh, confirm with B3. One. Five four zero zero zero. Bravo three confirm. Okay, and then I've got all zeros showing. Yep, that's correct. So now we're going to set up the speed, which should overwrite the, the error you just did, Cap. So we're going to type zero seven zero and then press B one and then do the same for B two. Zero seven zero B one zero seven zero Bravo two. In fact, I might change. Uh, we probably want to be going faster than 0.7 for the attack. So can we go uh, 080 and press? Uh, say so that's probably only for B2 then, I'm guessing. Just for B2, yeah. Yeah, so that's the speed from B2 to M3, which is where we're going to be attacking. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. So now the moment of truth. Uh, if everyone is in LS, I want you to be uh, TID in, and I want you to move the data panel selector one to the right and then back to TID. Are we still in or out? I missed that word. Uh, you're out. Out. So you should have displayed fourteen zero zero in three, two, one. Now. Yeah. Did anybody? Two. Okay, yeah. Let me have that. It was good for me. Nice and dense, all loads of time. Still got nine minutes. Two rolling. Three is rolling. So we'll uh, go nav at three. Make sure we're all comfy and then take off. I'll give you a bit of extra space to take off. Considering that we may need to gather together in the air, I'm going to do uh, give us three minutes leeway. So we're going to take off at five minutes. Two. Three. Okay, everyone now on. Now on. Two. Three. And five, four, three, two, one. I'm up waiting. Two rolling. Don't forget, you're pretty heavy, guys, so... 250. Two's rolling. 20 and 300 rotate. Two. 
to rotate. Fire is rolling. And gear coming. Two gear up. Push rotate. That's six rolling. Three gear up. Yeah, it's pretty thin out here, isn't it? Yep, we're up higher, blood. We're going to start and build up a little bit of altitude. We're going to be uh, turning right to, but we've got time so I can uh, carry on in this direction for a little bit longer. How close is everybody? One mile, say speed lead. Uh, speed is currently uh, just coming up to six. Okay, yeah, just coming over the mountains now. Two in formation. Oh, wake table, this is bad, guys. Yeah, don't try not to stay too close at the moment. Okay, you're going to be rolling out in 3, 2, 1. Assume that's cap pulling up a more right side. Yes, sir. I've got the difficulty that IL-2, I can only get the trim working inverted. So, as you can imagine what happens when I come back to DCS. It's really hard. <laughs> okay, it's two saddled and having fun. Three is saddling, which is not having much of it with the speed. Two guys, yep, far back on, on the left. right. They seem to have got lost. Might have a look around. The closer one, I'm not lost, I'm just taking it. Sure. Uh, just six so closing. Good, so we are about uh, just over 40 kilometers from our point for you. Uh, before then, we're going to go a nice loose trail. I'm going to stick my radar on, I'll find the ships. And does everybody else know how to slew their target onto uh, Two. Target? Three. So in order to find the ships, we're going to have to be about 100 meters or so for them to be able to get a good radar picture. Once we have the ships contacted, we'll turn around, we'll chill out in this uh, nice flat area here until the TOT system says that we're all good. Then we'll go in for the main attack. Remember, for the main attack, we should be trying to aim for about Mach 0.8. Uh, to possess all the TATs. So just keep that in mind. Six dropping Vex. Okay, if, um, I've still got a little bit left in mind, but I'm going to drop it regardless so I can keep the same speed. Everybody drop your bags. Good. Bags off. I stagger laterally so you don't get in the wake. 200. And leveling off. There. Two level and at altitude. Okay, back on to the autopilot. We've got 10 kilometers until we hit our next waypoint, at which point we're going to turn our radars on and try and hunt those. Reminder for everyone, we've got friendly ships converging on the USS John A. Moore, so VID via VID. And another reminder is that there's a lot of those container ships out. Guys, can you guys confirm I have good tank separation? This is two speaking. Yeah, yours is gone. Okay. It's good. Burning through the formation with tank still on. Oh. Okay, radar's on, people. Two. Three. Five. Six. Okay, we're gonna make a right turn, make sure, a left turn, sorry, make sure. I think I can see it on the radar already. What we're going to do is we're going to keep turning until the... Cap spike. Cap spike. We're too high, blood. Just going to shoot us down if we go in this high. Okay, you should be able to see on your radar. It's just to the left of where our thing is. Should be straight ahead of us. Two. I've just changed it now, and we're going to turn. I see two groups. Get nice and low. Don't panic too much, it's quite far away from us, only missiles, we've got to take a little time to get. You uh, can turn your radars off as well. Two. I want to make sure the only RWR we're hearing is from that ship. Okay, leveling off. Oh, that we're, we're doing the circle, we're doing the orbit guys. Signal. So we've got about three minutes. Going to increase to stage one to get a bit of speed. We lost a bit in that. Cap stage two back into uh, back into his place. I fell back. 
I have no idea who's won anymore. Okay, it's 60 seconds. We're going to turn round back towards the top. You're aiming for Mach 0.8, but need to slow down a little bit if you're ahead of time. Speed up if you're behind. Okay, turn left now, turn back on the target. Go stage 2 in the corner to make sure you don't lose too much speed. Stage 3 if you have to. Back on stage 3, keep the turn nice and tight. 40 seconds, back on the stage 2. Okay, I've leveled off towards the target. Uh, the the t numbers on the display are the time until we need to be, the time ahead or behind target we are. Okay, I'm a little bit ahead, 30 seconds. Going to slow it down a little bit. In fact, going to do a little bit of a left and right just to uh, increase the distance. So I'm now 20 degrees left off the top. Um, considering the nature of the attack, I'm not too fast for about 10 seconds. Yep, it's all good, boys. Don't get too excited, guys. A lot of you are overtaking blood. About max 6.5. Doing a little bit of notching here, so that's quite good. 2.4. 5 zero kilometers away. Uh, when it hits about 20 seconds, I'm going to turn on the target. I don't think we're going to be able to correct it too much without killing up too much speed. Okay, turning right now. We're spiked. getting spiked. Don't worry about it. Just get nice and low on the target now. Go into stage one to build up the speed. Get really low. You should be at about 10 meters and then that thing won't, won't worry. Yeah, I've lost it. Watch out for the transonic suck, guys. It shouldn't be going supersonic, you need to be aiming for about Mach 0.8. Now everyone needs to go A and F, and you're hunting for the... Everybody press T1 to unlock your missile Mavericks. Missile out, missile out, missile out, everyone get low. Get low. Okay, aim towards the where the trail of the missile is, not the circle. I can see something up ahead, but I think that... Seems too close. Cap tally, hostile. It is close, very close. Oh, blood. Project popping up. Two popping up. Still too far away, popping down. Two down. Damn, I can't see him in my scope. Where the fuck is he? Is it caged to the foresight with T zero? I'll see. Uh, blood. Uh, yeah, T0 then T1 will unlock it, that way you can just look straight at it. Popping up again, seeing if that's close enough. Still too far away, going down. Distance is 30 kilometers. Yeah, assuming that our target is on, on the correct thing. Yeah, no. Trying again. Missile out, missile out. I got a lot. All right, Will. Whoa! Ah, it froze. Four out, turning right. Full power, keep low. Try not to go supersonic, it's going to really mess you up. Cap. Rifle times four. I'm getting the out of here, guys. See you in hell. Try not to turn around completely immediately, do a turn, go level, do a turn. It means that the missile has to try and track how far in front you're going to aim for, and it will bleed off more energy. Two notching right. Again, don't go full speed when you level, because otherwise you go supersonic and you will kill yourself. Six. Four. Four. No. Aim, it should have hopefully gone back to L1 if you've gone back to NAV. Just try and slowly work your way towards there. Two, L1. Sod slowly, caps going burn. Stage two maximum. Yes, sir. Right, since I can't do four times drive for an RT. I'm going to keep low, that's what will keep you alive. Hostile missiles out, hostile missiles out. Good job, good job, good job. Also. Oliver has a Perry is on fire. Oliver has a Perry is on fire. Eight confirmed hits at the moment and counting. Sixteen confirmed hits. Wow, that's 
sexy, guys. Just keep low while on the ocean. Once we hit the land, we'll pop up a bit. Don't go stupidly high, but looks like we might have killed the punk. Be interesting. Okay, John A. Moore's firing Check. harpoons at the patrol boats. Harpoons are out. Quick orbit, I think that'll be enough for you guys to cap. Milano, 76 mil on the John A. Moore is firing. Six has a visual on lead. Yeah, currently in the left hand orbit. Patrol boats, wow, look at those. Look at that fight. One patrol boat down. Go, John A. Moore. Which side are you on cap again? I kind of like it. I kind of support in the bad guy a little bit now. Who's the bad guy in this context? Uh, well, it depends, you know. We have just launched an According to my wife. Yeah, we're doing really hard to make ourselves look like the bad guy. Okay, back on yeah. to L1. Uh, gonna try and hit a back Mac point six. I think would be fairly comfortable. Supersonic You're missing a great fight, boys. Wasn't really tempted to hang around with that on a very there, to be honest. Oh, back Milano, though. Oh, that one go past. Yeah, it's all right. I'm slowing down. Just catch me. That's all right. We've got time, we've got about 70 kilometers to hit the air. Uh, just coming up to 1,500. Okay, we are set for <laughs> I'm going up in the direction as well. Ah, visual. Alright, rejoining from the right. Oh, okay, I did not see speed in that. Patrol boats are firing their 100 mil guns. Okay, we have finally broadside access. Look at that. I think it's got the same, it's a higher rate of fire than the Milano. Oh, I've got a full fleet broadside. Pow, pow, pow. They're behind fighting over an island. It looks so cool. Da, 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 da. The Iranian-American equivalent of the Battle of Trafalgar is currently commenced. This is so awesome. One patrol boat hit, but it's still going. Another harpoon out on the patrol boat. Missed. Boom, in the face. Problem is, the radars on those patrol boats are so shocking. That ought to do it. Yeah. Oh, the midships is blown up of the USSA drew more. Got more. Roger. Okay, so for landing, it's runway 09. We're going to come in on the dead side at... Uh, I need to set the QFE up. Uh, then we'll do a break left. Uh, Alright, uh, we'll do a hold here, because it'll be easier then to come in. So, I'm going to put the autopilot left turn on, which is a little violent. So, I'm going to do that in 3, 2, 1, now. A little violent, 75 degrees. No, I more meant the speed at which it happens. And coming down to level. Just if you put the autopilot on while the person on your wings are expecting it, you tend to bump in. Yes, checked. Agm eighty four, come through. Cap, you're actually. We're almost flying over the airport. Roger, I'll, I'll come in now. It's just such a friggin' awesome fight, I just can't stop watching it. Right, I'm coming, right, we're gonna land the stupid plane. Putting the S into saddle, but the moment is to beat him. <laughs> I'm touching nothing. Lucky girl. 
from it. I never really got that good at formation flying because it's always lead positions. Okay, we're going to level off here in three, two, one. Pop it pilot again. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to stick it in a right hand turn in three, two, one. See what I mean by it's a bit violent. Yeah, it checks. It's not fun being in the two slot on a right hand turn. Uh, I'll, I'll stop doing that. <laughs> nah, it's fine. I got to an actual on right three. Yeah. I mean, it's lovely and smooth once you're in it, but obviously it jerks around quite a bit. It's just jump the nose down, slam on the rudder. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to come off the autopilot now and start. So just pushing the nose down a little bit. Nice and gentle. Slowly get to five degree descent. Okay, let's hold it there. Can't see the airbase just yet. I think it might be the next ridge over. Just gonna level off here in two, one, now. When we come to these mountains, uh, come off the autopilot again and we'll start descending and do a right hand. Spider off. Pitching down. And we'll do a nice slow right hand turn now. And hold it there. Maybe some small adjustments to the turn so we get on target, so just watch out for that. Increasing, increasing a bit. Increasing some more. A little bit of a pull. There we go, coming around nicely onto it now. Wow, well, steps into the wake there. Little tweaking bad. a little bit. And leveling off in two, one, now. Oh, that's lovely. Perhaps the echelon left to one. Uh, we're aiming for about 300 meters, so we're still going to keep pitching down. And we're going to start we from the left. And we're going to roll off to the left hand side, come around, and do a nice second. Shit, I've you're a, burning. I've had a bird strike or something. Yeah, you're burning. Oh, shit. Something's 300 meters now. Never. Uh, cap there was a minute. Carry on, oh, no, you guys. Wait. Carry on, you guys. I've got to go there for an emergency. I don't know. Okay, start breaking from the left now. We're breaking. One breaking. So remember the runway is 09, so you want to be 270 on the downwind. And you're aiming for about 500 kilometers an hour. On the downwind? Yeah. You can Last just think, yeah, I know it's quite quick, but it slows down pretty quickly uh, in the final turn. And that's 270 now. Three's downwind land. One's downwind land. Are we doing long or long landings or doing short? Do, do long. There's a F. The last person can do a short one if they fancy uh, being. Hey, uh, Cap, how are you getting on? I'm fine, guys. Don't worry about me. I barged my way into someone back, so not, uh, I imagine. Okay. Uh, you probably want to do your turn on finals. Okay, here we go. Gear down. There we go. Let's try not to jump ahead of you. Yeah, that's quite a long finals. <laughs> Maybe we should do some uh, practice for circuits. That's only worth four miles. Oops. Damn. It's not being wet blood, it's fine. Beware, blood tends not to think about other people and will slam his fast reverser run in your no, face. No, I won't. <laughs> I do normally do that, yeah, but yeah. I know there's plenty of people behind us. But I'm last, so I'm going to do that. I recommend not using brakes, though. Just use the thrust reverser. It's usually a bit safer. Four is about to touch. Down. That was a bit dangerous. <laughs> Suddenly built up a lot of speed near the end. Good landing front two. Please expedite because you've got a bunch of bitches coming up behind you. 
see if we can get off here. Oh, I can't make it off there. Yeah, um, I was landing and I'm like, I'm in, I am too quick. <laughs> I tried to slow down, but didn't. Anyway, we, right we didn't die. That's the important. Sink right for. Ooh, save. Oh, -ho, we had another collision. It's funny, isn't it? We can attack a heavily armed frigate, but we can't land. So GR. Was that information or was that just... No, uh, just a guy <laughs> just tried to land at 200 clicks per hour and just fell out of the sky. That looks a lot like Tebro. <laughs> that, is a, that is definitely a Tebro move, isn't it? <laughs> right. Yes, Tebro died. Welcome back, Sam, guys. All very good. Thanks, Don. So, uh, we did the attack and we got how many target... How many missiles on target? 16 of the, I guess, 20 fired. Yeah. Well, actually, so... Because I didn't get mine off. Mm -hmm. So six, yeah, sixteen confirmed hits total. It's amazing. Uh, it looks like the AAA and the SM missiles just either couldn't or didn't shoot our rifles down. Uh, the vampires now they can in real life. If you've read the book, they can shoot them down. But in DCS, it doesn't look like it's modelled. So all sixteen got through. However, it appears that no dam um, damage is actually modelled when vampires hit because there was absolutely no damage. Uh, to the ship done, which is a shame. So it was all really, really weird. However, then to save our ass, these five patrol boats came in and um, started shooting the crap out of the USS John A. Moore and damage ended up pretty much the same as in the book in the end. Amidships was blown up just like in the book and it was just uh, on fire and cruising at about five knots. So completely different, but it ended up the same. Uh, we used Vigans, we used Time on Target, which worked. I didn't notice the exact time of the attack, but you know, within a couple of minutes it worked perfectly. We were supposed to attack three minutes ahead of the on patrol boats, which is pretty much what happened. So that was perfect. Any comments from Blood or anyone else about the attack? Yeah, went fairly well. It was only the, the landing that was a bit dubious. Oh, yeah, and then typically fashion. I smashed into someone because I was trying to film outside, and then Ruby or someone, Tebra, had a bit of a moment. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll think up some more cool vegan stuff to do because there are infinite possibilities. If you want us to do a particular real-life attack recreation, let us know, and we'll get it done. I hope you enjoyed that. See you later.